What's going on, guys? Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. Welcome back to another Warrior Wednesday where we discuss relevant topics designed to make you a better warrior. Today's going to be an interesting episode, so we're going to get into some practical, tactical stuff and philosophical stuff at the same time. Yeah, I was talking with somebody today and they were telling me that they try to, they tend to um, be very conflict adverse. It's a fancy way of saying that they don't like conflict. And a lot of the times they don't want to deal with issues in their life. Um, and they asked me, they said, well, look, you you clearly um, don't avoid conflict. You're clearly very comfortable with conflict. Um, and they wanted they wanted some advice. Right. So <laughs> I gave them the same advice that I literally give every single time I'm asked a question like this. And um, <clears throat> I explain it with like a military analogy. Bear with me. Let's say that we are walking in the woods, right? We're patrolling in the woods. Um, we've got some super cool, like, woodland camos on, right? That's very re uh, retro. Like, that everyone likes the woodland these days. We got woodland, right? Um, but better yet, we're super high speed. We've got multi-cams on pride precision high end stuff good shit and uh you know we've got a bony cap bony cap bony cap bony cap whatever you want to call it we've got those right and it's like it's sewn like it's sewn so that you can still look through the the rifle optic like what's his name uh recommended and then everyone started doing it <laughs> um oh we've got like multi hundred dollar tactical backpacks on okay and we've got our weapons at the low ready patrol. It's a really fucking stressful situation that out of nowhere just hits us. And we've got <laughs> rounds coming in, laying hate down on us, hurting us physically very bad and emotionally as well. And it's a really bad situation that we find ourselves in. We've really got very minimal options out here right now because the enemy force waited till we were directly in the middle of their kill zone and started fucking trying to murder every single one of us with extreme hate. And chances are very, 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 very high that every single one of us is going to die. Uh, because if, <laughs> if for some reason any of us survive the initial minute or so of just fucking complete round dumpage on us. Um, and <laughs> for whatever reason, we're still breathing. They're going to come and assault through us and stab us with bayonets or shoot us in the head afterwards. It's a bad situation. We have really no options here except one. We can turn and face whatever direction we think that ambush is likely coming from and assault through it. If we have grenades, we can get close enough and throw grenades as we assault through it. We can shoot at them and run and bound forward, right? Um, we can <laughs> we can try to use smoke as well to throw if it's an L-shaped ambush and screen some parts of us. We can try to, you know, have a, a one element, you know, flank while the other one bounce forward, whatever. But there's There's a lot we can do, but it all involves trying to assault this ambush. The other thing we can do is try to retrograde and run away from it, but if it's a well-laid ambush, we're not really going to be um, so lucky doing that. Either way, we're totally fucked, but in the first case, assaulting through it, it's possible that we might have a chance. And it's a shit sandwich, so we got to take a bite and assault through it. Right, so for those of you go guys who aren't familiar too much with a uh, L-shaped ambush, I'll throw it up on the screen right now, and uh, you can see it's a very shitty situation. You've got bullets coming in at you from one side, and you've got bullets coming in on you from another side in an, a shape of an L. Right, so if you try to run away from it, chances are you're going to get hit this way. You try to retrograde and go back. You got to run pretty far to like be able to make it out of that kill zone or get away from these bullets coming at you and bullets travel, as we all know, for a little while. Um, 
you've also got bullets coming in from this side, right? So running this way is definitely not an option. Um, running this way forwards could be an option. Uh, you're going to get fucking pelted with bullets from this side. Running this way into this side of the ambush is also uh, a shitty option because you're going to get pelted with bullets from this side and whatever else they have. Maybe they have RPGs or whatever the fuck kind of, you know, bad explosive shit that they can send at you. Um, it's a bad situation, but if you're able to turn, face it, and assault through what's coming at you that's very uncomfortable and hurting you, um, that's kind of the option that you've got. You know, that's kind of the fucking shitty option that you've got. And again, you can like try to use a smoke screen on this side if you can, if you have the wherewithal or like you can try to assault through this way and send an element to try to outflank them, which is anyway, like there's a whole classes are taught on this. Um, but you get the gist of it, I believe. Like <laughs> I'm not a small unit tactics expert. Okay, just like I'm trying to make a point here. Assaulting through your problems, especially when it's a shitty situation and you really don't have any other choice but to face it or try to run away from it. But when you try to run away from your problems, they'll always catch up with you, dude. Like eight or nine times out of 10, that's not a good idea. Facing your problems, facing whatever the fuck is is the issue and tackling it right there and dealing with it and assaulting through it is generally the best option that you have out of a couple of pretty shitty options. But dealing with it head on is usually a fairly, the best choice, like I said, out of shitty choices in life. Um, shit's inevitably, inevitably going to come up that sucks um and the more you delay dealing with it the bigger the issue gets and potentially you know the more uh serious it gets if you face it head on at least you're going to put it on its heels right it's the same way as if we were in a a fight and somebody starts punching at us, right? I tell this to all of my students, especially the new guys, that if you just show up and try to back up, you're going to get taken, you're going to get taken, right? Um, but if you shell up for two seconds and then start returning punches, you're going to put the other guy back on his heels or at least give him pause. Same thing. When we start dealing with our problems and we just say, you know what, fuck it, I'm dealing with this right now. At least we've taken it and started dealing with it. And once we get a grasp on what the fuck it is and what's going on, we can then come up with a solution for it or a plan to get through it. And if we survive it and we get through it, that's really what matters. So being risk adverse is not a bad thing, but being conflict adverse doesn't really serve you too much in life. It really does no good it kind of delays an inevitable and it might get you it might get you through sometimes in this like soft modern world that us in the west uh, kind of live in it might get you out of an argument or two but like what are you a bitch <laughs> what are you a freaking pussy dude like who's afraid of an argument if you're really that afraid of it, you got to come train with us, gutter fighting secrets, dude. Like, you got to get your ass over here. Buy some of my online programs like ASAP. I think that um, most of my audience on this channel, if, especially if you watch Warrior Wednesday on any regular basis, you're probably not conflict adverse at all. However, I've known some serious martial artists that. They don't want shit from their woman, dude. Like, or they don't, they're not like, they're not like they, maybe they could kill a man with their bare hands quickly, but they don't like like getting in arguments and shit. And it's funny because you wouldn't think that, but 
I've met them. Like, they're out there. You know, even me, like, um, you know, dealing with women, I've always in the past just never wanted to deal with their shit. I've always just been so like, and it's not that I ran away from a conversation or anything. Um, I've always been willing to have a hard conversation, but I just never really wanted to communicate, right? If they started giving me shit, I would just basically say, you know what? Fuck you. Like, I'm out of here. Like, you're done. I'm, I'm going. Um, and inevitably, that would have them come back to me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But like, you know, in my later years, later years, I'm 30. I'm not that old. But in my slightly wiser years, you know, I've learned that if you just deal with it right then and there and say, hey, listen, okay, what's going on? Let's talk about this. And you listen um, as best you can, and they talk. More importantly, they talk. You repeat back what they said a few times, and you say, you know, like, your emotions are totally valid right now. What you're feeling and what you're expressing to me, like, I totally understand this. Completely valid, and you feel that way. Um, and I think that blah, 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 right? You deal with it right then and there. And a lot of the times, all they really needed, the women, was like for you to act like act like you were hearing them or hear them, um, address the issue. Um, and then they can feel like they can move forward after that. Maybe, maybe if you're a real gentleman, um, you can humble yourself a little bit. And if it was your fault, apologize and tell thank them for communicating with you. Um and, and usually that will be enough to move on afterwards, right? And that communication is way better than just saying, you know what? Fucking stop talking to me. I'm sick of your shit. Like, get out of here. Go away. I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> it's one way to deal with it. But if you really are after uh, something more meaningful, the latter is um, it's probably not the best approach. Probably better to communicate, right? Dealing with the problems head on. And that was a long-winded way of me saying, you know, this this doesn't necessarily just apply to a male-female relationship. This could be in any friendship, right? Deal with the problem. Like, something comes up and is bothering you. You can't just say, like, oh, it's fuck, their fault. Like, fuck you, man. Like, why do you always got to do this shit? Well, he's always got to do this shit because you haven't told him or her that, like, it upsets you. Or, like, it, you're, like, not, you don't like when they do that, right? So it's not their fault, it's your fault, because you never communicated with them. And you never communicated with them because you're conflicted first. You don't want to make trouble. But if you had just said in the first place, you know, bro, when you do that shit, like, I don't like it. Please don't do that shit anymore. Like, I'm going to draw a boundary right here, bro. Like, don't do that. Whatever it is, right? Like, it kind of just pisses me off. And, like, I like you. You're a solid dude. Like, when you do that, like, it just makes me feel a certain way. So, please, like, don't do that no more. And if there are any type of rational individual, they'll say, oh, shit. Like, yo, my bad, dude. Like, I didn't mean to, like, piss you off. All good. Like, I won't do that shit anymore. Problem solved. Problem fucking solved, dude. Whereas, like, if you had just, like, observed the behavior and not said anything about it, whatever that behavior is, right? Maybe they're, like, I don't know, maybe they're talking with your girlfriend a certain way or, like, whatever, right? Whatever. If you don't immediately deal with it and say, bro, like, you don't do that. Like, I really don't, I don't, I don't appreciate that. Please don't do that. Like, I respect you, but please don't do that. If you just, like, stuff it and don't say anything, like, the next six or seven times they do it, finally one time you're going to freak out and, like, it's going to be a lot worse. Because you were fucking being conflict adverse. Don't do that. <laughs> like, address it right then and there when it happens. Deal with it. Communicate about it. And move forward, right? And this could be a coworker. This could be a whatever it is. If somebody's trying to take advantage of you or do something that you don't like, you need to tell them right away. Like, hey, you know, dude, like when you're asking, like when you're asking me to help you with your workload over here, like. It's been like fucking forever since I've worked in an office, but like, I don't know if I ever have, to be honest. But like, when you're trying to like, you know, get this, like, get me to share your workload, dude, like, I don't mind doing it one time, dude, but like, I can't keep doing this. Like, I got my own shit to do, bro. I appreciate you and I respect you, but like, don't keep putting this shit on me because it, it's not my department or whatever, right? Oh, shit. Like, I'm sorry. Well, I didn't, I didn't even think about it. I was just stressed out, but like, you're right. You're right. Dude, problem solved. Problem solved versus like, like doing something for somebody over and over and over again. And then finally, one day you blow your fucking top and you're like, fuck you. You're always trying to get me to do this shit. Da, da, da. 
<coughs> and it ends up, <coughs> excuse me, being a big thing and like ruining a friendship or a relationship or even costing you your job. So <coughs> you want to avoid that at all costs. And we avoid that again by dealing with issues as they come up, assaulting through them, addressing them and moving forward. So I really hope that maybe this has struck a bell with somebody out there. Maybe somebody needed to hear it. I don't know. But um, look, I care about you guys a lot. You guys who always comment and like give me the thumbs up and like are all supportive of my channel, our channel. I really appreciate it. And um, <clears throat> I'll always try to give you advice from kind of my heart and situations that I like face in life, right? Like again, tonight I was talking with this individual and they were telling me about this and I thought, you know what? I might as well just share this with, with the GFS crew because <clears throat> it's like, it's a pretty common thing and people like deal with this shit a lot. And you know, I'm again, I'm not like some old man giving life advice, but I am a, I'm a guy who's dealt with some shit and I can give you the advice that, it's coming from my heart, and I hope it helps somebody. So listen, until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. Check out all of our stuff at gutterfightingtecrease.com. Grab one of our direct download um, combative programs. They're freaking awesome, and uh, they're a great value, and I really, I know that you'll, I know that you'll like it. Try one out. Um, let me know what you think. Gutterfightingsecrets.com is the website. All right, until next time, Mother Flowers, stay safe.